tax reform is at the top of the agenda as finance ministers from the group of 20 meet in Venice. More than 100 countries agreed to a global minimum corporate tax rate of at least 15 percent. The world's biggest economies are trying to ensure huge multinational companies pay their fair share. Ryan Thompson reports from Frankfurt. Well, the meeting of G20 finance ministers in Venice has wrapped up day one. All eyes were on this global tax plan, which was rolled out and discussed as an idea during the G7 summit in Cornwall just a little bit over a month ago. And in the days and weeks since that summit ended, it's really gone from an idea that was agreed to by those seven powerful leaders to something that is ready for the world's economies to sign on for. The OECD in Paris has really guided taking this from a piece of an idea to a piece of policy that the world's economies can uh, actually adopt. Uh, we've seen these OECD negotiations to be quite successful. 130 countries have signed on saying they are ready to go. And of course, this global tax reform to corporations will bring in over $100 billion that will be dispersed into the world's economies because there will be more fairer tax rules. It could happen as soon as 2023. But there are still some countries that are big holdouts here, notably nine OECD countries. And that's what we expect these G20 ministers to try and hammer out over this weekend as they discuss economic policy. Because within Europe, for example, there are three countries who just are not ready to sign on to these rules. It includes Estonia, it includes Hungary, but perhaps the biggest one is Ireland, which Europe's tech hub. So we're not exactly sure what comes out of this, but it's certain that these G20 ministers, all of whom and their countries have agreed to adapt this tax reform, will try to think about how to convince these hesitant countries and these countries that are firmly against it to really sign on to the policy to make this a global effort. All right, let's bring in Edwin Ecoria, the executive director for Africa One campaign to discuss the meeting in Italy. Edwin, welcome to Africa Live. The, the One campaign has expressed skepticism that there will be any major announcements from the G20 finance minister, especially on emergency issues. Can you tell us more? Yeah, I, I think the biggest, our biggest concern really is that in the middle of a pandemic, um, now that we are, we've seen the third wave, you know, reaching its zenith in Africa, and while the rest of the richer countries are kind of, kind of moving on with, you know, most of their population already vaccinated, we're hoping that this will be an opportunity for the richest countries of the earth to begin to discuss how to end the pandemic. You know, while conversations are already happening about talking about preparing for future pandemic or against future pandemics, the question is that what is happening right now? Why this should be like the hot topic for any gathering of the richest countries, particularly the resources needed, you know, to improve access to vaccines and to enhance recovery from the pandemic. So we, we, we were not expecting too much because, again, from the G7, uh, the commitment in terms of doses didn't really, you know, was not ambitious. But we are hoping that as G20 finance ministers meet, at least the idea or the agenda of ending this pandemic should top any kind of conversation right now. Um, that's, that's basically our reservation in, in terms of this uh, meeting that is happening. All right. So, Edwin, what are the key issues that the G20 should focus on to avoid repeating the mistakes that have hampered the global response to COVID-19? I think that one of the first thing really first is to understand that the fiscal spaces for most, Afri most African countries, most low income countries have been really, really affected by the global supply chain that was disrupted uh, you know, uh, during this pandemic. The question is how do we mobilize the resources? How do we mobilize a global plan to end the pandemic? So we thought that that should be like a top of the agenda how do we mobilize the, 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 the funds necessary to improve one, not just ending the pandemic access to vaccine, but also bouncing back in terms of, you know, uh, creating the jobs that have been lost, you know, rebuilding back the economies and then of course, climate change. So we are hoping that this will top the agenda, but of course, um, like you already talked about uh, previously, the global tax, minimum tax, you know, is, is, is one of the key agreements that we see here. While that is good in the long term, the question is, what are we doing right now to end this pandemic, especially when the finance ministers of the richest country come together uh, at the G20? All right. Speaking of what we're doing now, there are also calls for the G20 to ensure the work on pandemic preparedness does not distract world leaders from tackling the current crisis. Can you give us more details on that as well? 
Yes. Um, you know, there was a report, the high-level uh, political uh, forum that is given a report on, uh, on resourcing uh, uh, pandemic preparedness. Now, the question really is that when you're going to bring out such a report, which is great, which is good to look to the future on how to plan against, you know, the future pandemics, the question right now is who is going to trust you to do that? When the poorest countries right now have basically been told you are on your own, so how, how, is the, how are you going to mobilize the whole world, even against preparing for future pandemics? So that announcement is made. That report has come through, um, you know, through, the, through the, uh, the committee that has been set up, you know, uh, um, that it was announced yesterday. The question now is that how do you mobilize others to come behind that? How do you get them to stand with you? Talking about a global effort, because currently the poorest countries are not, uh, you know, receiving a global solidarity. So that's, that's the biggest concern we are having. And we are hoping that as you're preparing for the future, when the house is on fire, you cannot be talking about a sprinkler system that is going to you know, make your grass green in the future. So we hope to put out the fire and we hope that that is going to be the toughest, uh, the, the, the top discussion even for the G20 uh, finance ministers. Edward Okoria, thank you so much for your perspective on this. Much appreciated.